So, Happy New Year everybody, it's 2020. I just wanted to give you a bit of a, my opinion on the market in 2019 and where I see things going next year. Um, so 2019 for me personally and my clients was a great year for purchases. Um, I think across the portfolio, I think we added around about 30 units in total across three to four people, including myself. Um, there were some great buys to be had and again, the council grants the empty home grants which is where they'll pay anywhere from two thousand pounds up to ten thousand pounds depending on how long a property's been empty that was part of our business model buying properties that needed the refurbishment where we could add value in order to refinance and pull the money back out so same plan for next year in terms of the portfolios we're looking to buy more um, most of our clients are still active in the market they think it's a great time to buy uh, and they'll continue to do so so from my estate agency point, sales were down um, this year compared to the previous two. I think that was to be expected with the uncertainty around Brexit, the political elections that took place, etc. But as the bit of a seesaw effect, as we have seen the sales numbers drop, we actually seen lets were at an all-time high, uh, and we had our most successful year on lets. So. Proven again, a lot of people who weren't buying were still renting, they weren't staying at home, they were getting out there, they were getting their own property. So there was also a number of new strategies for property investing. Most people know about buy to let, but we're seeing a massive upsurge in companies looking to do rent to service accommodation. It's a bit of a way to sublet a property and the person who lets the property, then via their company, lets the property out on a, an Airbnb or a booking.com basis. So. We've seen in city centres a lot of apartments and in kind of seaside locations and holiday locations, a lot more competition between private renters and actually companies. Now, the massive effect for us as an agency were, in terms of the tenant fee ban that came in in June of 2019, we were actually still allowed to charge companies uh, uh, an administration fee for the work that we do. So that, you know, you, you've seen a lot of companies come into the market and from a company point of view, we'd rather deal with companies who we know are a lot more established than a private individual. However, obviously we do still get professionals in those locations as well. So a little bit of give and take on that one. So that, that's, in my opinion, the rent to service accommodation strategy. Um, it's for a lot of people who can't afford to get into buy to let, they're starting by renting a property and renting it out. I've seen a massive upsurge in rents in city centre locations because of that. And I think that'll continue until the government regulate that sort of industry. So in terms of Brexit 2019, eventually we got what we wanted or what the people voted for, we got leave. Now it hasn't happened yet. Um, and how long it'll take to actually come to fruition, God only knows. Um, but we're in a period of transition following the 31st of January next of this year. Um, we'll be getting some new trade agreements in place with countries. We're gonna start seeing what Brexit actually looks like. Um, and hopefully, you know, it's a prosperous time for the country. Due to the Brexit, obviously, the part, the reason why we're actually now leaving is because of the election and the Conservative majority. Uh, it's nice to see an actual majority for the first time, I think, in about 14 years. So Parliament can actually get some bills voted through, they can work on policies, and they're not going to have other political parties standing in that way of, of progress, really, so that, that's great to see. One of the big things we've also seen in 2019, again, is legislation from a landlord point of view. Things regarding data protection or GDPR is, seems to be the new buzzword with the Information Commissioner's Office, basically writing to every single landlord, advising them that they need a certificate if they deal with any personal data or they hold any data. Again, another Charge for landlords, that's just me assistant dropping me paperwork. So another charge for landlords, a bit like the deregulation of gas. All these new laws coming in for landlords, it's squeezing the profit margins. Uh, can you hold that a little bit further down, thanks. So again, 2019, nice to see the back of it because it's been a big year of uncertainty. A lot of people holding off investing in property, not me, I've thought it's a great time to get in there. While other people stop, that's when the bargains are to be had. We're not buying property for a short term gain, we're buying it for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And I'm sure the outlook for the economy will be completely different by then. So 2020, what do we expect? 
So, in my opinion, I think we're going to see property prices rise. Um, the Savills report states that they see property prices rising across the UK by 15.3% by the end of 2024, so a five-year forecast. And that's actually going to be even better in the North East, which is even better for me. It's 19.9%, .9%, so around about a 20% increase in five years. You know, if prices go up like that, it's going to be a lot less affordable for first-time buyers, which is going to be a shame. But again, I am going to get on to help the buy and what schemes to have that are coming in and already in place at the moment on that one. So, section 24. Again, landlords felt the effect of it last year. Um, it was the income tax relief landlords received for their property finance costs. Now paying tax across the full rental income instead of the rent minus the property finance costs or your mortgage. So that's been felt by a lot of smaller landlords who we are seeing selling up. Um, they weren't professional landlords. There were a lot of people who, for example, it might be a couple who, for example, have got together, they've both had their individual properties and they've decided it's not cost effective from a tax point to keep the second property whereas in the past they may have rented it for one reason or another. So section 24 causing a lot of landlords to get out of the business. Again, the, the more professional investor, not an issue. Most of those hold their properties in limited companies and you know, it hasn't really affected those in my eyes. If anything, they're buying more than what they were prior to the S24 introduction. So wages, wages in 2020, we're now going to see the, the age, 1st of April, go up for over 25, from £8.21 to £8.72. So a, a nice price rise there, around about 5-6%. I'm sure that's going to be felt in people's pockets, which is nice, because I think it equates to around about a £900 wage increase in a year for someone working full time. I'm sure there's benefits of that to the property market, the economy, shops, businesses, you name it. And the forecast for the government for the national living wage is to actually get the wages up to £10.50 by 2024. That's again going to have massive effect, you know, first time buyers are going to find getting deposits easier. Banks are going to see affordability from a buyer's point is a lot easier if they have an extra one, two pound an hour coming in. So nice to see and hopefully it'll give people a little bit more money in their pocket to actually spend. So section 21, so the non-fault eviction as they call it. Um, it's a standard way that most landlords take back possession of their property. Most of them use it because there's been an issue with a tenant on non-payment of rent. Um, they're not maintaining the property, they're breaching their terms and conditions that they've signed. Um, and you know, most people serve that alongside a section eight, but most landlords don't want possession of their property back. From my point as a landlord, I want good tenants who are gonna look after the property and pay their rent. I'll give them a good standard property. All I ask is that they look after that. Where landlords have been gaining possession is because there's been issues regarding the tenant or they've needed the property because, for example, they might have split with a partner and they need to move in themselves. So it wasn't necessarily landlords just kicking people out for the sake of it, which the likes of Shelter somehow think. Um, they've been very big campaigning this year for tenant rights. So, sorry, it's just changing my page. So again, the, the changes with the Section 21 is going to mean that the government have to introduce some more changes with the section eight process which is the the 14 day eviction notice rather than the two months i think if the courts can tighten up on that side of things we won't really see any issues in my opinion the tories getting rid of the section 21 is purely a, a marketing exercise it's a vote winner you know there's plenty of people renting in this time and age millennials etc who can't afford to buy so it's seen as being a, a a good vote and moving again it's one of the things that probably help them secure the election so again i don't think that's going to cause many issues for us going forward as an agency or as a private landlord but you know there is a lot of changes coming in there what actually happens there is we're expecting it to come in late 2020 to 2021 once it's been passed by the queen and parliament um, and there's going to be a six months transition so it's not something we're going to have to adapt to overnight we're going to have plenty of time one thing that is going to come in that I think is going to be troubling for most landlords and for me it's the big thing to watch in 2020 is selective licensing or additional licensing. It's going to be brought in and it's going to affect 3,000 homes as opposed to the 18,000 that it was actually originally hoped by the council. Um, it's due April 2020 but it is possible 
that this may end up a national, a national landlord register or a national landlord licensing scheme. I think it's already something similar in place in Wales with Rent Smart. I think it's called. Um, I know one of my friends from down there. They, they've already got every landlord licensed. So it's only a good thing to improve the quality of the industry and the accommodations that's out there. But again, it is an additional cost for landlords. We know what landlords are like. They don't often like additional regulation. Um, with there have been around 170 pieces of legislation now, the regulation of them is getting more and more. So I can see a lot more landlords passing their properties over to agencies, which in my eyes will lead to properties being better looked after. Um, properties will be better maintained. It's no longer the times when you just need a gas certificate now with an identification and a tenancy. You know, you've got so many things in regards to right to rent, immigration, the deregulation gas act, you name it, there's, there's a new act now. Um, so again, selective licensing is going to be massive in 2020. And if it's not national by the end of the year, I'll eat me hat. Next page, please. So interest rates for 2020. Now for me, alongside wages, this is going to be one of the big things that drives house prices up. The last monetary policy committed, committee actually voted seven to two in order to leave the rates the same. I think that was back in November. We've obviously had the election since and they're due to meet shortly. Two of the committee members actually voted to lower the interest rates down to 0.5%. The reason they wanted to lower it was to boost the economy. Um, now, I think they've tried to hold off it as more of a wait and see tactic, but I can see the interest rates coming down in 2020 once we get an idea of what Brexit looks like 31st of January. With that, it's going to mean the cost of mortgages are cheaper, but it's also going to mean that anybody's saving money in the bank don't get as good a savings rate because savings rates are linked to the interest rate. So again, great time if you're going to be buying and fixing yourself into a two, three year term on a mortgage, but not a great point if you've got savings or, you know, money that you're relying on the savings rate to live off. So not a great thing. So going into 2020, I think 2020 is going to see prices rise as a result of the interest rates lowering. Um, a lot of the uncertainty regarding Brexit, investors coming back into the market, wages increasing, I think the outlook's positive, really positive in my opinion. So I'm going to be looking to buy from me and my clients as, as much as possible because I think just by buying in 2020, you're going to be benefit from an uplift by the time 2021 comes in. Um, Big Ben chimes. So 2021, what do I have? What, what's happening? So you're going to see a lot more clarity on what help the buy schemes are, are around for buyers, which is the main way first-time buyers tend to be getting on the market at the moment. So you might know that buyers look to buy a property, but they buy it in, in, in shares. They can buy either a 25, 50, 75, or 100% share of the property. It's for people who can't afford to get a mortgage, for example, for 100,000, but they can get a mortgage for 25,000. They buy a 25% share and they pay rent on the, the, the other amount of the property that they don't own. There's been a change for 2020, which is going to see some help to buy schemes go from you having to buy an additional 25% every time you increase your ownership into increments of 1%. So you could buy another 1% this year, 1% next year, which I think goes more in line with people's wages going up. It's a lot easier to get a mortgage on an extra 1% of 100,000 than it is an extra 25%. So again, a lot of first time buyers are getting on the market. There's rent to buy schemes now. I think, if anything, it's probably the easiest time it's ever been to get on for a first-time buyer, despite the house prices, because there's so many incentives for them to get on. Um, so again, I think that's going to help the market move. People buying extra equity in their property is going to allow them further equity when they go and step up the ladder. So I think that then impacts on the people who just privately own their homes. And that then filters up the chain again to four bed detached, five bed detached, and properties will land. So again, 2019, glad to see the back of it. 2020 is looking positive, and I think we'll see that going forward into 2021. If anybody has any questions or anything that they're interested in or they want to know what I think on anything at all, please just ask in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you, and have a great year.